Get in there, you beauty! <laughs> Welcome back to the channel and a very happy new year to you all. Lancashire, ah, what a beautiful winter's morning. 10 minutes drive from the house, I don't know why I'm whispering. You know when it's the morning and it's still and it's quiet. I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna alert the wildlife. Um, <laughs> 10 minutes drive from the house and it's another one of these locations that's really local to me that I've never really been to properly and definitely ne never with the camera. I think I came here once or twice when I used to go to school around here and uh, this is beautiful, very reminiscent of the river Braithe area near Elterwater in, in the Lake District if anyone's familiar with that. But today, as I'm sure you can already tell, it's all about the frost and that is actually what I want to talk about a little bit today. Um, frost. It is absolutely thick with it this morning to the point where I'm almost convinced there's, there's, there's got to have been a dusting of snow. I don't know. I think it is just really thick frost. It's beautiful nonetheless. So we're out for the sunrise, which is probably still another 20 minutes, half an hour. I like to get here in good time, you know, just to scout around a little bit, you know, especially as it's somewhere that I've never been before. Um, but I don't see myself really struggling to get one or two nice shots this morning. It's beautiful. So as always, us landscape photographers, uh, the fingers are crossed for a nice bit of morning light. Let's go and explore. Oh, what a playground. Guys, it's stunning. I tell you what, honestly, only about five minutes ago, you wouldn't even know now, but we just had like, I was gonna say a snowstorm, but I think that's a little bit over the top. I think Canadians will be watching like, mate, what are you on about? Um, just a bit of sleet, you know, like freezing rain, but it was coming down pretty heavy. Um, and it clouded over and it, it was one of them where I thought, ah, oh, that is a shame. Like there's gonna be no chance of light, but it has just transformed within the past, honestly, like, less than five minutes so quickly so i had the camera set up with a composition that i thought was quite nice just in case you know you never know what's going to happen unfortunately it, it looks like it's gonna work out quite nice this morning i was actually thinking i'd come back a different morning that's how, how that's how much cloud that we had um so i'm still not 100 percent sure if we're going to get any direct sunlight but if not we've just got some stunning color in the sky honestly over towards the east where the sun is rising and it's like, how do I explain this? You know, sometimes you get them really vibrant sunrises or sunsets. It's not one of them. It's one of them really subtle ones. And honestly, it suits the morning. It suits the conditions so much better. Um, you know, the colour matches with um, uh, the, the lack of wind, how peaceful it is this morning. It matches with the frost, um, the calmness of the ri river that's going to be cutting through this composition. It just works. In fact... Whilst I'm chatting to you here, I'm going to quickly grab another shot. Make sure I've not got any of this heavy snowstorm on the lens, you know. And, um, ah, lovely. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be quite nice. I am still hopeful we're going to get some direct light, so I will be sticking around. Now, composition is really simple, actually. I uh, just need to refocus that one. That was all over the place. <laughs> I When I first got to these sort of river banks here, I was thinking foreground and this is something that I've been saying a lot recently yes a lot of, a lot of the time finding a bit of foreground fits I think it's the right approach to have with your photography you know at the very least you're thinking about composition and that is a good thing but this is just another one of them where simplicity wins you know this is a scene that 
kind of photographs itself in many ways. All you've got to do is come here at the right time in the right conditions, which is obviously what I've done this morning. We've got the River Loon here that's going to be um, like starting from the bottom right hand side of my frame and then just diagonally cutting through the frame. And then of course on both of these river banks on both sides of the River Loon, we've got all this frost. We've got the beautiful morning pastely light. <sighs> it's stunning, the clouds. Oh, I'll tell you what, this has come out of nowhere. The clouds are beautifully textured. Oh, there's a bird flying through the frame. Unreal. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be nice. I like I said, I will stick around to see if we get any direct sunlight on the land, because that's kind of what I'm really after. Looking promising. I hope you like this shot. The birds are tweeting. There's not a breath of wind. Stunning, these are the mornings. These are the mornings that are just like, they just make life worth living, don't they? Oh, running out of things to say, like, just it gives you that feeling, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, you can't beat winter. You cannot beat it. It is the best season by a mile. I ain't even talking about photography, just, you can't beat this, frosty. I know it's not always like this in the UK. <laughs> it's usually just clouded over, uh, fairly mild and just wet. <laughs> but yeah, when it's like this, it's an absolute delight. So let's talk about the frost for a minute or two. Um, talking about frost. <laughs> well, what it is, is my last video, if you've seen it, if not, I'll stick it up in the corner for you to watch. Um, Without going into too much detail of that particular video, I went on a hike and went up to um, a hill or a mountain, a fell <laughs> in the forest of Boland and it wasn't particularly high, you know, probably only about 500 odd metres. Um, but then I was thinking about this, I was like, yeah, all right, like I'm young, I'm, I'm fit and I'm health, healthy and yeah, all right, to me, that's not a big deal. In fact, I was thinking like, wow, as if I've come up only this far and I've got all this snow, I'm not even in the Lake District and it's not even like the Lake District to big mountains to me, you know what I mean? Like, but to a lot of people, that's a massive deal. You know, that's really intimidating to go up a hill or a mountain in the snow, but they might really want to. And I was thinking, you know, this channel, a lot of what it is about is, I really like the idea of everything to do with landscape photography being inclusive. And I don't like to feel like I'm excluding a certain demographic. Um, and yeah, I was really thinking about this and not necessarily people that have got mobility problems, just people that might be a little bit older or it might even just be a confidence thing, you know, not even a physical thing. Somebody might just be really fit and healthy and they might just think, what's a chance of my going up a hill in the snow? And I wanted to make this video really to show you that you don't need to miss out on some wonderful winter photography and wonderful winter experiences as well, you know? because that's something that we, we're lucky enough to get out of being into landscape photography as well. And just to say, yes, I'm always out on crazy adventures, but you don't have to go up mountains to get the best out of winter. There's this, I've parked up there. You saw where I got my free parking, what a result. And uh, that's like five minutes walk away and from where the car is to get to this river bank. And obviously this is just an example, 20 seconds. It's down a flight of steps. Um, so yeah, there are things out there and like I said, that's the thing, I, I, I want to make it feel inclusive that anybody can do it. You don't have to be hiking up mountains to get the best out of your photography. This, to be honest, is pretty much as good as it gets. I'd like to think one or two years agree with that. You know, 
Um, this to me is just as nice, different experience, but this is just as nice as being up a mountain for sunset in the snow. So I hope that makes sense. Maybe you'll be able to find some areas near you that are a little bit more accessible. And of course, make sure you're checking the weather forecasts. I think some of the apps and uh, websites and that actually tell you when there's proper frost forecast, which is cool. If not, I find it usually f starts frosting over the night before um, in winter, where I live at least. Like you start seeing it get frosty like eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, oh, this is class, honestly, what a morning. Right, I'm definitely staying out because I do believe that the sun is going to come up and over some of these clouds at some stage. We've got nice big gaps up there. And yeah, I'm just going to go further along down this river bank and see what it's got to offer. Let's crack on. Oh, so once again, we've made the effort to come out to a cool spot with our camera and we're being rewarded, we're being treated to some beautiful light. Gorgeous morning light. I'm so glad that I decided to stay out and see what happened with this sun. In fact, it's looking like it's going back behind the clouds now. This, I, I love it when you see these sorts of things. That This has lasted 60 seconds. And yes, I've had to rush around a little bit, you know. Um, but I'm here, I've made the effort to be here, and this is my reward. It doesn't always work like that. <laughs> but fortunately this morning it has. So, you can see here, obviously we've gained a nice little bit of height, and we've got this incredible vista down into the Loon Valley. Straight out the top drawer. This is gonna be a wonderful winter panorama of all this, this frost. And that little burst of light that we had from up here has just made it, it really has just made it. We're looking back towards Clopper Pike, the clouds are nice, beautifully textured. I think there's even a bit of snow on some of them fells over there. But a really nice classic panorama. So I'm at 55 mil with the 55 to 300 lens. And I'm, I'm taking about six shots from left to right. Obviously I'm in a portrait dimension. Panning across the landscape and then I'll stitch these together in Lightroom when I get them home. Um, probably a two by one crop, maybe a three by one. Not 100% sure. I usually like to try both with all my panels and just, you know, see which one I prefer. <clears throat> um, oh, it's, it's awesome. So I'm doing exactly the same thing with this panel as I was in my last video. Um, another thing that I'm doing and I've started to play around with a little bit is in this, in this instance, yes, I'm doing a panel, but I also need to bracket, especially on this left hand side here, because it's so, you can see here, it's so bright, but yet so dark down here where we've got them trees. Um, so I need to be really careful with the dynamic range, you know. If I was just doing single shots all the way across, I'd end up either, either overexposing the sky, sorry, where the sun is, and under or underexposing the foreground, you know what I mean? So I'm bracketing each of the shots for the panel. And then in Lightroom, there's a feature that is um, HDR panorama. <laughs> so even though we're gonna essentially have what, like 21 shots going from left to right, it's an automated feature. I'm finding so far that it's working really, really well. We don't get that sickly HDR effect or anything like that, but we do, uh, it does allow us still to control the highlights and not overexpose, especially in this instance when we are shooting into the sun like, you know. So consistent focus and consistent settings all the way across. One 320th of a second at F10 and ISO 100 for every single shot. Of course, that's getting bracketed with each of them shots as well, but that is the base exposure. And then I focus not on the trees, but off in the background, shooting at F10. We're gonna get a nice bit of focus throughout the image. So 
probably the last image of the day. Buzzing for it. What a beast, what a beast. Look at this by the way, I hope you like that photograph. This is well annoying. <laughs> Look what, I, I, that broke, or I broke that, can't blame the camera. See the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the SD card door or cover, um, snapped off. Didn't even snap out on location, just in my office. I was taking a camera out, snapped it off, or, or you know, undid the cover as you do, and off it snapped, right, on, right down onto the deck. So uh, that was a bit of a downer, and what's even more of a downer, because this is, I suppose it's an old camera now. It's not old, is it? But you know, as cameras go, as tech goes, I guess it's getting on a bit. Because they're like discontinued. I had to pay 25 quid just for that tiny little piece of plastic from eBay. And it takes like a month to come. If I wanted it to come quicker, you're looking at about 40, 50 quid. Madness. So waiting for that. I don't really enjoy using it without the cover, um, but, so be it. <laughs> um, right, home time, cup of tea. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a mint um, 2021. And uh, yeah, make it your resolution. There's me telling you what to do. Make it your resolution to get out with your camera more. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I suppose that's probably my resolution, but that's, it would be anyway. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please give the video a quick like if you have a second. It really does help out my content here on YouTube. And comment down below. Everything gets read and I love to hear from you. Thanks again and I shall see you on the next adventure. Out.